And then uh, on Wednesday night uh, when we came together, we uh, enumerated seven wonderful blessings uh, that uh, God has in store for those who practice praying together, worshiping together as families. And I mentioned uh, some of them, and we took note of that. And then for the sake of uh, the strengthening that God wants to uh, see in uh, the lives of God's uh, people, we find that uh, uh, we need to speak the language. There is a language of the family which, should, uh, which we should learn to speak. We all speak English. Or we all speak uh, the languages uh, that uh, we were brought up from. But then uh, if you want to run happy families and uh, uh, blessed families, then there is a need for us to learn the family language. Okay, so there is a language uh, that uh, we may think that we already know everything, maybe we can speak and we can and uh, all that. But uh, I'm reminding you, but uh, all don't speak that language. The reason why we are having little, little problems within the family is that we have not yet learned the language. Okay, so I don't know what is it, this strange man, he came from uh, nowhere and he is telling us all kinds of little, little things and uh, we are getting uh, a kick out of it. Of course, uh, I am a strange uh, guy from a strange little country. And even though we have our own family uh, education and uh, the way we are made together as uh, families and uh, we grew up within the circle of the family, we developed ourselves like everybody else, we went all over the place and uh, we related to, you know, uh, brothers and sisters and young people and all the ones everywhere. And so we learned quite a few things for uh, our own benefit and uh, we have reached a stage in life where we believe and we can also share some practical, you know, suggestions as to how we can uh, develop uh, our own families. And so when I tell them that uh, you must yeah, learn to speak the language. So what is this language? You have to speak the Lao language. Okay. And uh, what do you mean when you have to speak Lao language? Uh, I'm going to say seven things again. Okay, seven things some dimensions of what it means to speak the family language. Okay, some of them uh, uh, are very applicable. Many, you know, if you're married or not married, or growing up children, or in people, or uh, even seniors. Uh, this uh, language, speaking the language, no language, is very, very necessary. One language that you must learn to speak is to look. You can you can uh, speak without speaking. Uh, do you know how to speak without speaking? And uh, people everywhere know something about me, and they uh, also in my farewell meetings or any other meetings. And now that I'm a uh, little bit experienced, and uh, they want to relate back to things that they have learned from me, etc., etc. They try to tell me, I speak with my eyes <laughs> more than my mouth. So, God has given you two beautiful eyes and without opening your mouth and saying one word, you can speak with your eyes. And uh, those of you are growing up and uh, uh, you know what it means to uh, speak with eyes. Now the boys will be sitting in that corner, the girl will be right here, and uh, the warden and everybody, and the principal, everybody will be there, and uh, they stick the rule and regulation that they should not be unnecessarily seen communicating, etc., etc. They will not be seen unnecessarily here and there and all that, but they know one look. <laughs> they speak, their eyes speak. And uh, I tell them, uh, you must develop that language. Whoever you are, you must develop that language. Uh, 
understand the mother's perspective, that language in relationship to the children. Mm -hmm. And of course, children should learn to speak that language as early as possible to speak with their parents uh, without speaking. I will not uh, speak with the uh, look. And uh, husbands and wives to get along. And without speaking, you must take time to look. You know, by just looking. <laughs> you don't simply look. No? It's a look of appreciation, admiration, and that look penetrates, and it it uh, it uh, forms a bridge, and uh, it uh, one heart travels and uh, gets into another heart without speaking one word. Some women and uh, I'm talking women in general, and then I can uh, particularize it and say wives in particular. They complain about uh, men. Not a great big issues that uh, uh, get into the relationship difficulties uh, uh, between husbands and wives and between uh, you know families. And uh, I have listened very carefully, listened. sometimes I smile within me myself because uh, I cannot be smiling when I'm having counseling or seriously listening to you know, couples uh, telling their gripes and uh, grumblings. Uh, but uh, I can tell you now, Pastor, he brought me that dress. I wore it. I wore it. And evening, when I took it off, he didn't know that I was wet. <laughs> he didn't have the eyes to see, leave alone, admire, appreciate, and say how beautiful she looks in that dress, etc., etc. He doesn't have to speak, just one quick look. Talk to the Why not? <laughs> so, uh, sometimes they tell me, uh, what are you looking? I mean, I'm a man. I have two eyes. I look. What is wrong? What is wrong with looking? You have to appreciate. <laughs> uh, a man has to appreciate a woman. And uh, a woman must appreciate men. They are smart and if they are nice looking and if they are, uh, you know, sharp and uh, clever and etc., talented, gifted, everything. I mean, you don't have to speak, but look. Okay. So, I mean, I think uh, I've started to think. I, I've at least started you on uh, this uh, basic uh, language that you must all start learning. And uh, some of you may be already experts. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so I, I may have to come and learn. Uh, you may have to tell me what it means. <coughs> Second is words. So God has given you twice and has given you mouth. And uh, you speak. What you speak, how nicely you speak, just not just words. All of us can use words, all of us can speak. But some people can speak. You are immediately attached, fascinated. And uh, they say uh, the chemistry stops working. <laughs> then uh, so and so speaks. So, why can't they not learn that language? First of all. Okay. So, between husbands and wives and parents and children, or anybody, brothers and sisters of Goa, learn to speak pleasantly, kindly, 
lovingly, attractively, fascinating. What's wrong? Nothing wrong with that. So, uh, some of us have gone to school and we have obtained degrees after our names and uh, accomplished so many things in life, but we, I tell them, you have not learned to speak in the elementary level as yet. What's the use of growing in age and what's the use of accomplishing all these things, but you have not yet learned to speak. Speak nicely. Speak lovingly. You don't, you don't lose anything. What's wrong? So, and then we sit and gripe and complain and think, what was and why it's not working and all that, I'm not enjoying. You used to? Yeah, you used to. The honeymoon days, you used to. What has happened? Mm. Honeymoon days, you knew how to speak. And now you're, you're spying out mm. speaking, that's all. <laughs> so, it should uh, go on and on. So, speak. Look. Speak. Act. Actions. Okay. Uh, do something. I'm not saying no, all of us know uh, what great things you must do. As a husband, you know what great things you must do. I'm not uh, here to tell you that. I'm telling you little, little acts and actions. Just a reminder, that's all. Now, we are talking about uh, families and family relationships, etc., etc., et and uh, little, little acts and activities and actions of kindness, love, will go a long way to bringing uh, husbands and wives together, families together, and attachment will be uh, closer. And appreciation for one another will be uh, far uh, better. And uh, so I uh, uh, wish for you to uh, keep that uh, in mind. Okay, so uh, what did we say now? Look and uh, words and our actions. And along with all other actions that uh, may go in this category of actions. There is one particular action that you must not neglect or ignore or think slight or uh, less valuable in your life and that is to, to give <laughs>
Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right? So, uh, immediately we face so many times we face. The real thing we face. Nothing we can do. Except to call upon the name of God. Stop it. Okay. We love that person. And we pray that she will be like anyone of us. Wherever she is, whether she comes to church or not, uh, mm -hmm. we want her to be like anyone else. That's our wish and that's our prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the look and uh, okay, words and actions and gifts. Okay, and uh, then touch. Okay. So. They say all of us are made up of uh, certain distinctive characteristics. And the characteristics are uh, 23. One is uh, <coughs> video. Now, most of us are video persons. And uh, then there are others of us who are audio persons. And the third category of people are known as kinesthetic persons. You know, psychology, yeah. they give names, but uh, without uh, uh, knowing that names, we know that's what we are. Okay? Some of us may have two, or may, may have elements of three, but we are always uh, uh, high on one thing. Okay? Uh, what do you mean by this? I'll quickly explain it. Uh, video. Uh, the rice learn better than anything else. Don't have to even speak on it. We just uh, put some pictures or just take them for a little trip or whatever. They learn more than in a classroom setting or in a teaching setting. You know, preach, 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 preach. They don't like it. I didn't get it. Just a video. And others uh, are there who don't like book, video, pictures. They want words. Speak, 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 speak. We see some people who can speak. Speak, 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 speak. They don't speak. They don't hear. No, 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 it's not good. Uh, switch it off. There's a third category of people who are known as Kinesthetic. And those people are not uh, high on uh, video, not high on audio, but all that you need to do is, my child, you are so wonderful. You know, that, uh, that student, that little girl or boy comes back, you know, I like that teacher very much, mommy. Why do you like that teacher? All that she does is, how are you? Are you good? Thank you very much. Etc. Just a, a feel, just a touch. And uh, it's not only works like a magic uh, between husbands and wives, it uh, works in every other areas of uh, life. And therefore, I like to include that uh, all of us should learn that uh, language, that dimension of that language. So that brings us to how many? Five. Then. Look, words, actions, gifts, and touch. And then uh, for uh, family, for husband and wife, we say kiss. The next language must, uh, that comes naturally. So you don't have to struggle. But uh, sometimes as you go on, uh, some husbands uh, forget that language. Okay, so it can uh, become uh, a stress in marriage life. So, what happened? You used to, every time you learn this time, that time you used to uh, speak this language, but now it's uh, less and less. How is it less and less? It cannot be less and less. It should be more and more. So, uh, that's uh, one language piece over. And sorry for parents, same thing, both brothers and sisters, or whatever, friendship. 
and then uh, we are taken to the new dimension of getting, uh, you know, in love and getting married and husband and wife. That's a different kind of touch, a different kind of uh, kiss. And then finally it climaxes in intimacy. Okay. So uh, there is uh, no joy and there is no fulfillment when uh, you are able to speak all these other dimensions of uh, the language but still not able to uh, satisfy and find satisfaction in what is known as speaking intimacy. Okay, so a specialized ones. I would say uh, in life, what? life God has given us this wonderful gift of life and uh, gift of family and gift of marriage and our uh, relationship and everything else. You specialize on it. So I specialize on it. Let it, let uh, both of you know, as I was going let all the family members know. When it comes to our family, we have learned to speak the language. And we speak the language. And therefore, we get on our side. We are a wonderful bunch of people. Okay? So we can't be uh, specialized on that. And together, in the church, when we come together, when we speak that kind of a language. That's the secret of healthy, happy, vibrant, successful churches. So, but the work there, it's uh, reflected there. So, I told you when uh, we talked about worship, when everybody is worshiping nicely, and when we have corporate worship, it works beautifully and well. And so, uh, when I talk about these languages also, it is the same. Same thing. So I thought I will just give you this uh, extra. I don't. I have not given this uh, uh, you uh, friends here in uh, Grace Church. Uh, have somehow uh, stimulated me to come up with uh, some uh, extra, mm -hmm. uh, extra for all of us to think about. Okay, seven uh, languages. Some uh, experts talk about five languages. So. Coming from my background, I added two more. Why don't we make it seven? Okay. So if you want to make it eight, also you find another new one. Uh, include it. There's nothing wrong with it. So as long as you learn to speak the language. Okay. So uh, Ruth, I mean, uh, now we asked uh, questions like this, and uh, uh, Ruth shared whatever happened from that day and how she went into the tent and how Boaz talked to her nicely. And at the end of the day, how he put uh, additional uh, grain in the bag and uh, sent me back. In fact, he walked with me for a little bit, even though he's a big man, etc., etc. And she was listening carefully. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of it, she said, I know. My daughter, I know. Now you can rest, rest in peace. You can leave everything in my hands. It's going fine. I don't think it's to work out very fine. They okay. tell me one thing, that if those who are watching the game know better the game than the ones who are playing it. Mm -hmm. You know that? Yeah. Sometimes uh, when uh, they fail to kick the goal, all those who are watching it, you should have kicked it, you know, like this. <laughs> so, like, oh, look at this. So, likewise, uh, uh, Ruth and Boaz, something is uh, developing. And who is able to see that better? Well, Somebody is watching from <laughs> outside. Now he is able to understand it better. And he says, now I know, I know, beautiful, wonderful. He didn't believe it to me, everything is going to be working out fine. And then she says in chapter 3, verse 1, that Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, my daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you. And then we stop. And I take that and put it on the shoulders of mothers and fathers and parents when it comes to your responsibility to seek to the security, which means simply happiness, which means simply welfare, which means simply future. And everything you want your daughter to be, son to be, your children to be, shall I not seek? Hmm. Your primary responsibility, your primary focus 
among everything else that you will do in life, your primary responsibility is to seek the security, welfare, happiness, the progress, the success of your own children. So, uh, if we have studied uh, many things in, from the study of the Book of Ruth, and here is one important thing that we must include in our understanding of uh, the message and also for practical application of it. We must not ignore the this aspect of it because every father, every mother, together as husband and wife, must have a plan, must have a goal, must have an objective, must have a strategy. You know? how, how, how all I need to explain this. All need to be integrated so that together we will be able to accomplish the, the goals and the objectives of the family. So she decided to plan. And she planned in uh, two, three different uh, ways. One is uh, she wanted to know everything that is happening in uh, relationship to Boaz, this boy, somehow uh, cast his eyes on my daughter. And so I'm not going to ignore him. I'm not going to yet decide yet. But still, I cannot ignore because uh, they both have decided somehow uh, to be in love and something is going to develop. It is developing. I cannot simply stop it or kick it. And still, you know, some people get uh, get uh, worried and concerned. All of them they jump and get angry and upset and all that and spoil the whole game. You are not supposed to spoil the whole game. You must uh, uh, you must plan, plan. And, uh, if uh, it's not going to work, it's not going to work. If it should not work, you know. Uh, you may spoil it by spoiling it. You are not going to help it. And therefore, you have to be very careful. Yet. And so, she's getting at some information about uh, mm -hmm. Boaz. And uh, he also already knows that he's related and everything else. And, uh, you know, what uh, are some of the steps that can be taken. And cautious is taken, vigorously taken, and uh, boldly taken. Because of attachment to relationship, there are some things I, I can easily work it out. Because after all, he is our kinsman, uh, really. By the way, when I talked about kinsman redeemer uh, last time we were together, I said uh, the characteristics of the kinsman redeemer, one of the characteristics I did not uh, bring it out to emphasize that, uh, that is, a kinsman redeemer should be a man of law. Okay, I said man of what, a man of health, a man of this, man of that, but then I did not uh, uh, bring out this matter of uh, man of law. He is a discipline. Well ordered man. He knows the rules of the game. He plays life's game by rules. And here, if you are looking for a partner, if you are seeking the security and happiness of your children, you must develop them and discipline them to have people, to have them as uh, children who will have learned the rules of the game of life. And they will always play by the rules of the game. And so when you look for a partner for your children, you will look for similar people. Okay, so where else can you learn this except in the environment of uh, the church? The learning the basic fundamental principles of life and all that goes along with it. And that's how we have youth department and past five years. A program and all kinds of programs so we will learn the basic rules of the game and we will know how to put those rules play the life, uh, the game of life according to rules and regulations so uh, then uh, he also knows the rules of the community and so he wants to be a representative person in the community he keeps law and order he doesn't trespass doesn't uh, uh, become an incorrigible uh, uh, default. Uh, in fact, uh, when somebody is doing something that is really a little bit out of the way, 
They bring him to this part. He's pregnant now. To that extent, he is a, a, a dignitary. It's not really, what is a big dignitary? Because uh, you can look up to him. They look up to him. He's a man who believes in order, discipline, rules, regulations. So that's uh, something that I thought I'll mention. So she learned, uh, gathered some details about the uh, thing. One of the things that he learned was that uh, the harvest season is going to be over and the threshing of the grain, everything else was gathered. And now the final day will come when uh, they have to distribute the wages and everything else and they will have to take the grain back to the place where uh, they have the storage or gone up, they call it. And so that's what is going to happen as far as uh, uh, Boaz is concerned. And now uh, she is going to plan for the future and the welfare of uh, Ruth. And uh, she is going to let her plan her life so that she can go have a chance to meet him. Okay, so some people read the third chapter of the uh, book of Ruth, they have uh, dirty minds. And they think that uh, something uh, fishy was going on in the uh, threshing floor, and etc., uh, etc. Et what is the kind of uh, silly stories are there in the Book of Ruth and uh, the Bible and all that? And that's why I don't like to read the Bible. And uh, so I tell them, no, no, you must not uh, have that kind of uh, dirty eyes, um, dirty mind. Uh, when you read uh, some stories that. Uh, all beautiful stories, and uh, if I explain it, then you will know what, whether there is any possibility for any fishy things to go on in the uh, threshing floor. I'll tell you in a little bit uh, about threshing floor in Palestine, threshing floor in uh, the Far East or in countries like India or Africa, uh, whether the, that is the season, that is the time, or that is the location where the fishy things go on. Okay. So, leave that aside. So she wants to go meet him. That climatic point that day, that some people may be there, and uh, she wants to make arrangements. Boaz is going to be there. And he's going to spend long hours settling matters. In fact, it will, it will go into the uh, late hours. And therefore, uh, he is more likely to retire for the night right there. And that's what usually happens. And uh, being a, a senior and experienced lady, she knew about the, uh, the context. And so she was uh, understand understandably planning. And uh, so she says, uh, and this is the day we must somehow go and meet him and make the uh, initiative, take the initiative. So how is she going to go? And there are four or five things that I uh, want you to follow with me. And uh, five, four or five things that all women must know that care for. All believers who come to the Lord Jesus Christ, what are the blessings that they receive? All those things are there. So it's not just uh, mere spiritual blessings that the Bible is talking about. It's uh, wonderful steps, wonderful things that must be very carefully and enthusiastically uh, practiced by women so that when they go to meet, it will be a wonderful experience over there. Okay, and now what's happening there? She tells her uh, wife, Therefore, you're going to have a very important incident in your life event, unforgettable event. Okay, and you're going to meet. Boaz, how do you go? Not uh, without taking a bath. So he says, uh, wash yourself. One of the basic steps that any wives must remember to take <laughs> in order to have wonderful experience when you come together. <laughs> Wash it. Make yourself clean and neat. <laughs> 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 Love it all. But uh, 
uh, that's the, the practical. See, you have some. Okay. And now just keep yourself big. The next step, it is amat yourself. Go shopping. Get the. Yeah, whatever it is. I don't know the name. I don't know the name. So, if I, uh, if I told you I come from where is uh, But uh, you don't have to teach a growing young girl how to find the best perfume. Mm -hmm. Best method of abiding. Mm -hmm. When she's coming a mile away, we know that she is coming. Mm. And sometimes uh, you wonder why he is not really appreciating me. Because you are not taking the trouble or little effort to get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Just because I am saying this about women, it doesn't mean uh, the men can be dirty and you know, all kinds of things. No, what is uh, said for the woman, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, very important and uh, very necessary, but doesn't mean that it is not equally necessary as far as the men folk are concerned. We need to give attention. I, in my little counseling of uh, settling dispute and all that, if you are looking like this, man, how they shape uh, be with you all the time. You have to shape up a little bit. Yes. <laughs> you have to. You cannot be looking like uh, you know, no, uh, you have been involved in some kind of a blood or something. <laughs> and uh, you expect that you have to come close to you and uh, give you a hug and this and that. No, no. How can you do that? It's not possible. So, uh, <laughs> Some people tell me that uh, you are all going to guess my age. Pastor, as you grow, grow old, uh, you are revealing some nice good secrets. <laughs> <laughs> and so, wash yourself, wipe yourself, put on your best. A girl, to be a girl, you must know how to attractively dress. You know, keep that hair and keep that glass and dress well. I get What the fuck? Nothing wrong. Christ, and you will go 
at the feet of Jesus, learn to walk in the ways of the Lord, spiritual. It asked me to talk about spiritual steps in the journey of your spiritual life. Down there, at the same time, we are looking at it from the point of view of family relationship. Because Ruth was a young girl and he was falling in love with, uh, a man was falling in love with her and she was becoming interested in that and the mother-in-law was uh, coaching. Must have some coaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some coaches. And, uh, who is the pastor at the beginning yesterday? The pastor is about, uh, I wrote down, about 26. I left a lot of space because I may come to know a few more things what a pastor should be. And one of the things, he is a coach. He said to me, maybe I was, I was a coach, I didn't know by that name. So I need to be a coach. A mother has to be a coach. So, here look at the Naomi. She was a coach. Mm -hmm. She said, should I not be interested in this? Of course, you should be interested. Dead interested in this. Honestly interested. Every senior person, whoever it is, even if you are coming in contact with the neighbor's little girl or boy, must be a coach. Every member of the church, believer in the Lord Jesus, must be a coach. Not only direct and coach them to follow in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus, right? But we will ultimately help them to walk in the ways of the Lord if you are a coach for life. Okay, so, we're talking about witnessing ministry and, and uh, how to go about winning precious souls for Jesus, etc., etc. These are the little things, I think. We'll go a long way to. Uh, okay, my time is gone. So, uh, he will tell you about it. And uh, now we go to the threshing table. What is in the threshing table? Now, who is in the threshing table? Is there any way that uh, something uh, wrong was going on in the threshing table? And why this uh, mother in law recommended that this girl should go to the threshing table? First of all, I want you to remember two things one about the man, the other one about the yeah. The whole town knows who Boaz was. I told you who is the kinsman redeemer. I gave you the virtues and characteristics. If this is the kind of a person who is, you can leave anybody with him any time of the day or night. Don't have to worry one bit about it. Yeah. And this I have you learned anything about uh, the reputation and the characteristics of Ruth and the talk of the town about her? Everybody in our town is talking about this Ruth. It's a wonderful girl. Oh, very good girl. With the excellent reputation. Okay? So they're not going to go thinking and planning on something fishy in the threshing floor of all things. Okay? So, please remember that. Even then, I mean, all of us may be saints, but uh, we all have uh, our desires and uh, our natural tendencies and our temptations, etc., etc., and all that. I'm not uh, discounting that. Yeah, but uh, I want you to keep this uh, back of your mind as you uh, evaluate assess and come to conclusions about uh, people, especially about these two who needed to meet according to the steps that was taken by Naomi. They needed to meet at the threshing floor. The threshing floor, what happens in the threshing floor? The okay, men have been working from morning till evening and that day is going to be the final day. They have to gather the thing and make sure that the Midianites are not going to come and they carry them away, they have to protect it, etc. etc. They walk, 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 and the sun has set, getting dark. And now they cannot be leaving this and going home. And so they decided to protect the thing and they will find it up in the center and put some hay to uh, protect it. And also, uh, wall, wall of protection. 
uh, with the egg, of course. And then uh, now they are tired and weary. And uh, now the England climate, you know, uh, it uh, seems to be hot and suddenly it rains and it cools and uh, all that. They don't uh, feel it. But you go to certain parts of the world and you uh, slog and work uh, from morning till evening and late into the uh, night, you don't feel like doing anything. Okay? You are sticky. And uh, you can't go to a shower or anything like that. You can't go uh, to a river or something to take a plunge and uh, uh, take a uh, bath and clean and all that kind of a thing. But all that is there is uh, maybe a bucket or a bucket of water or something. You just splash it all over and you wet it to uh, neutralize uh, whatever the uh, thing that uh, you know has uh, happened during the course of the day. And then the next thing that you want to do is to grab something to eat. Because you're tired. You're not thinking about I mean, what I'm going to do and all that, that night, no. You're tired, dead tired. And you just want. So, as you're eating, one hard uh, word thing, man, with whom I was talking, Pastor, when I walk, I walk. I can talk to you. At the end of the day, he want me to tell you, I am tired of things. I come home, and I'm ready to grab something to eat. And pastor, sometimes in the course of eating that food, I am gone to sleep. That's what was happening in the threshing floor. Before you put two and two together and say, maybe, maybe, okay? And then, then, you know how they sleep? How many sleep in the threshing floor for? Leaving for this girl to come there and both of you are there all by yourself, solid to the rest, and you have a jolly good time there and all. There are about uh, maybe 10, 12, 15, how many reapers were there? They're all tired and sleepy, and, and now they have to protect the grain. <coughs> They'll put the head towards the pile of grain, stretch the leg this side, about three feet, another fellow will put his head and sit there. Stretch here, stretch here, stretch here. All the you know, sleeping there. And with some wives there, and with some babies there. The babies will be tied up in the branch of a tree or something, and that's the cradle, they will be doing that. Who else will come to the threshing floor if you want me to tell you? And the dogs will come there, the cats will come there, and sometimes they will bring the chicken also over there, and any little noise anybody is making, everybody will know. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you a description of what's going on in the threshing floor before you put two or two things together and come to some wrong conclusions or what <laughs> Oh, no, that's not the thing that you need about it. Yes. In practical terms, watch what is going on. What is the situation? How are men like? Uh, at the time, what is happening there? Hard work, etc., etc. But, uh, the only thing was that it was possible for this girl to go and make a request. And he will tell you. So the boss was sleeping. And she slowly went there. The suggestion was that the boy go just lie at his feet. And he will tell you. Just go there. And the Bible says she lifted the sheep a little bit and maybe kept her, uh, you know, whatever she. Day, day. And when you're sleeping, you're fast asleep and taking little extra time today, please uh, allow me. Uh, I don't know how you sleep. It'll be an interesting thing to find out how you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you want us to tell you how we sleep? When we sleep, we sleep. What else we do? We sleep. Oh, you sleep. Then one time uh, they said, uh, how do you sleep? You want me to tell you how I sleep? When I sleep, I sleep. I sleep like a log. <laughs> that thing wakes me up. When I go to sleep, that thing can wake me up. I sleep. Mm -hmm. So when we 
without planning. You know, in the beginning stages of our life together, we talk together, we make some contracts. See, what we do, what I do, the friends are trying to take care of you and provide everything. Don't worry, I'll keep you happy. <laughs> okay, but then uh, uh, one of the things that you must remember to help me out because I uh, what is that one of the things when I sleep, I sleep like a log. So if something happens to the house and then it's from strange noise or anything that happens <laughs> in the night, please, my girl, it will be your responsibility. <laughs> Don't expect me to go, who oh, that uh, thief that is breaking through, and I'm not going to Because when I sleep, don't disturb me. When I sleep, I sleep. That kind of a setting. Suppose it's like, uh, uh, I don't want to compare British uh, weather, but in some parts like that, they sleep. When they sleep, they don't need anything to put water. But about one o'clock, two o'clock, the air becomes a little bit chilly. And then you need something to put over. It's the same thing when you're sleeping in your own bed. And when you go to sleep, it's a little bit uh, hot and warm, and so you don't need really a finger, but you keep the thing ready, stay handy. But then uh, when it's getting a little bit chilly, you know that it's uh, getting chilly and you need a, a sheet to go over you. How do you approach that sheet? What is your attempt? Your practice. Your practice. I can tell you what I don't do. So that you know what I do. <laughs> what I don't do is, I don't say I'm uh, feeling too cold. I need a sheet to go with me. So I'm going to get up. I'm going to sit up, I'm going to go switch it on, and then I'm going to take that folded sheet, and I'm going to do like this, and then make sure that I'm going to have like this, and then switch off the light, and then I go back to sleep. Uh, who will do that? You know, I will do that. Who? What do you do? You know what do? You don't even use your hand. Because it's, uh, it's tight, too tight. You, are, you know how you sleep. When you sleep, you sleep. <laughs> you know how I look for, look for my sheep? <laughs> I was going to ask her what you do. You are telling me what's <laughs> So she had the right to go 
and make us small request because uh, she didn't know the stranger to begin with. But after that, uh, when she came back and gave the report where she went and whose field it was and how he related, how he treated, and etc. etc. Now I know now he will be etc. etc. So he said the same thing. So he said, please make a remark. You guys were a little bit awestruck, but the boss was not awestruck. I'm glad you told me this. I was waiting for you to tell me this because it's <laughs> wrong. <laughs>